Welcome to Kit Guru. You're here with me, Christina. Come on in and feast your eyes on the lightweight mouse from MSI called the Clutch GM41. Weighing in at 65 grams, this is a lightweight mouse with an RRP of $49.99. So what can MSI offer us in the saturated world of lightweight mice? Well, we're gonna dig a little deeper and find out. The unboxing experience is a little basic with not much to see inside. We have the manual and the mouse itself. Once we take the mouse out, it's definitely not screaming gamer with a less aggressive rounded design, very similar to the Razer Viper except for the Viper is ambidextrous in ergonomics, whereas the MSI GM41 is right-handed only. This is due to it lacking buttons on the right-hand side. We have a nice long cable at two meters ending in a gold-plated USB-A connection. The cable itself is pretty stiff and thick, so much so that it can be bent into kind of any shape and it will kind of stay that way too but the only good thing is it doesn't knot and because it is so stiff you can easily stretch and smooth out those kinks it also doesn't catch on surfaces either for such a lightweight mouse I would say that the cable is a little heavier than I would expect this didn't hinder my own personal performance as such as I'm used to a heavier mouse but it does certainly have a higher amount of resistance due to that cable especially when compared to other lightweight mice such as the extra fire and for or the Razer Viper. I mean, let's face it, almost everybody buying a lightweight FPS mouse will want the cable as light and as flexible as possible. First impressions aesthetically are there are some interesting things going on. We have the awesome dragon logo on the mouse hump, which is complemented by a lovely bright RGB that shines through it. Some more interesting features are included on the sides, these trippy diamond embossed patterns on that rubber finish, and that creates a really comfortable and effective grip. On the mouse body and the left and right click, the satin plastic has a slightly metallic finish with silver flecks mixed into the black. Very subtle, but it is there. I thought I would have a look inside this mouse to see what the switches were like for the left and right buttons, and they are Omron switches with a 60 million click lifespan, a tactile and clicky actuation with very little pre and post travel. They also sound pretty satisfying too. Here's a sound test for you. The side buttons or the back and forward buttons on the side are located on the left hand side of this mouse and are gloss black plastic. Inside the switches are Huano blues and I would say feel slightly less clicky than the left and right click Omrons but they do have very little pre and post travel which is nice to see. The mouse wheel has a tire effect grip and this runs all over it. The increments are small with a low resistance really I would say. This did lead me to over shoot a few times when playing and getting a little bit overexcited. There is another texture as well running around that mouse wheel and this is the stipple effect matte plastic. This also continues to the underside of the mouse where we can see the gloss MSI dragon logo engraved and surrounded by rather large white glide pad underneath here and there are also two glide pads at the top. These work really well on my mouse mat with no scratchiness or catching and it glides really well. The bottom pad being rounded also helps with that glide. I think. Unfortunately though you don't get spares in the box of these, that's a little disappointing. Whilst we're here we can see the opening for that Pixar PMW3389 sensor with 400 inches per second, 1000 hertz and 1 millisecond polling rate and the DPI switch to the right of that. If you press the DPI button you can see the RGB logo blinks and changes colour depending on what setting you're on. This is great as you can really change that on the fly and know exactly what setting you're on. There are also other functions that you can do on the fly by pressing the DPI and other buttons for instance. The DPI and the scroll wheel changes the mode, DPI and the back and forward buttons for instance changes the speed and colour and so on. Then we have the inbuilt presets for the DPI itself which are 400, 800, 1600, 3200 and 6400 with a max DPI of 16,000. I personally just kind of wish this button was on the top but I know some of you wouldn't like that due to it being potentially 
eventually click by mistake, but for me, I like it and I also would have liked to have seen a back and forward DPI button so you don't miss that DPI setting and have to go all the way back round again. I know this is preference, but you know, I do prefer that as my mouse has that. Whilst we are talking about the sensor, I did a lift off distance test and on the low lift off distance setting on the software, there was a super low lift off distance. It struggled to read at even one disc height and there was no input at all being read at two disc sites. On the high lift off distance setting though, I found that the sensor was still reading fine at two discs height, but stopped reading at three discs height. Now, that is really high if you ask me. So if you're looking at having some custom glide pads fitted to this mouse, you are in luck as they should be able to accommodate for that. Looking at the mouse shape, even though this mouse is symmetrical, it only has side buttons on the left hand side as mentioned earlier, meaning it's going to suit right handed users best. The body is symmetrical with a slight thumb and pinky support on the sides, this hump is rather low too, again very similar to the Razor Viper. Usually this means that with certain grips you can end up with quite a bit of your hand hanging off the back of the mouse onto the mat, and this is either a positive or a negative depending on how much friction you prefer to play with. But for me personally, I prefer a higher hump so that I can use my palm grip without too much drag. However, the MSI GM41 has a slightly thinner and longer back end and body than the Viper and this allows you to have the choice to move into grips and positions with or without friction. If you use fingertip grip or claw grip though, I think you'll find this extra comfortable, but to be honest, all grips work pretty well. This mouse is 130.1 by 67 by 38.3 millimeters and has a weight of 65 grams. My hands are around 6.5 inches and the width is a dream for me and my small hands, but that extra length does also make it slightly tricky for me to reach the buttons on the side. However, this isn't unusual for me as you will know if you've watched previous reviews as very few mice accommodate my short thumb. Moving on to the build quality now, you can squeeze the sides and engage those side buttons. For me, it doesn't happen in normal gaming positions, but I really don't have very strong hands. So if someone does get frustrated or tense in a game and has quite a nice strong grip, they may be able to engage this accidentally slightly easier than myself. Pushing down on the top though doesn't engage the left and right click, but the underneath does flex quite a bit if you squeeze it between your fingers. The Razor Viper side buttons can be engaged on the sides when squeezed, but I found that the extra Fi M4 doesn't have this issue. Neither of the competitors have flexi bottoms either. This is obviously a slight issue with the build quality, but one good thing, there are no rough edges. Even though the body is in sections, the buttons float above the underneath plastic. It's all very well rounded and not sharp at all. Finally, there's no rattle, even if you shake it quite vigorously. And I think that that's quite good, but obviously, there is those slight issues there, so it will get a slight markdown for that from me. Now, onto software. Make sure you have the most up-to-date version and click the mouse button. Here, you can remap your buttons and their actions. I would have liked to have seen a warning for the change in the left button there, as without it, you're in pretty big trouble in terms of operating your system without it. As well, you can select different profiles on this page. On the next page, you can adjust polling rate, lift off distance, as mentioned earlier, and you can turn angle snapping on or off. Just to let you know, angle snapping happens when the mouse sensor tries to predict your movement and smooths out the path it thinks you're traveling to by ignoring a few degrees of movement in some other directions. Some people obviously like this, others don't, and it is really down to the task at hand that you're doing. You can change those DPI preset stages here, and obviously, as we mentioned earlier, you can change the DPI on the fly with the button underneath. Don't forget to press apply to save or default to put it back to what it was. This is a very easy easy to use software and I think it makes sense. Now gaming wise, I did the usual Call of Duty test and my main points to mention is that a lighter mouse does really feel better when playing FPS games, but that low hump didn't feel quite as comfortable to me as a higher hump using my palm grip. However, the longer body and side supports kept my hand off the mat quite nicely when I needed it and I found that I could move a lot quicker in urgent situations because of that. The stiff cable though didn't affect me 
too much as I mentioned earlier because I'm used to heavier, slower mice, but for people who are used to a lightweight mouse with a lightweight cable may find that there's too much resistance here. On the sides, as mentioned, there is that support, but they're not like major lips or skirts. So if you're playing with your pinky and or thumb down on the mat, then you have that choice to do that. Or you can lift your fingers and thumbs up and there is plenty of space for them to sit and be supported. I do have to emphasize the fact that this shape will obviously appeal to certain people more than others. And that's with all my shapes really. So let us know down in the comments what you think of this particular shape. In conclusion, I believe this mouse is quite good value for money as it has some pretty decent specs and features. But in answer to the original question of what does this particular mouse have to offer, I would say that there isn't really a lot that this mouse offers that we haven't seen before and for a similar price range. There is also slight build quality issues here, but some things I did like were the rubber side grips. They gave it great texture and also the longer back end shape gives you that support and choice in various positions and the side support means you have friction choice. If you compare the GM41 to the Extra Fi and the Razer Viper, for instance, those mice obviously have a slightly, and I mean slightly higher value, but they offer very, very similar specs to the MSI Clutch GM41 without the build quality issues either. And let's not forget the one other thing that I think lets this mouse down in comparison to the above competitors, and that's the cable. Like I said, I didn't mind it too much, but there is quite a lot of resistance. I'm used to a heavier mouse, but I don't know, I'll let you decide. If you're used to a faster, lightweight mouse, this possibly could tick you over the edge with not buying this one. Let us know down in the comments what you think of the MSI Clutch GM41 mouse and whether you're excited to get it or not. Ring that bell, hit that subscription button, check out our merch, and don't forget there's daily tech news on our website. This is Kit Guru, I'm Christina, see you next time.